Hey guys, how you doing there today? It's old Bruce here, working on another project. I've got a Slingerland Radio King from probably the, uh, I don't know, looks like late 40s maybe. It's a cloud badge. It's a 7x14, double lugged, 16 lug, beaver tail uh, Radio King. And what happens with these drums is Whoops. People put a lot of stress on these lugs. Uh, it wasn't this much stress when I got it. But um, you can see that I'm not real fond of double lugged solid wood drums. Well, actually plywood drums either. For the simple reason that when the lugs are over tensioned these bottom screws tend to jack out and they pull the shell you know out of flatness this should be flat across here if you look at this drum it's got an arch to it across here right here in the middle uh, I've seen this prevalently on um, uh, Leedy and Ludwig drums, especially from the uh, 50s. Uh, they're the thinner shells. They, they tend to really bow out. So what I'm going to do here is, what I'm going to attempt to do here is, I've put a jack in this drum, put some pressure on it, and uh, you can see in there I've got the jack up there up against the wood trying to separate it so I can get some glue in there and try to put this thing back together so now that I've got it pulled out of here I want to um, of course this drum's gonna have to be refinished obviously so what I'm gonna start doing here is I'm gonna put some glue in here make a mess And I'm going to try to force the glue in there with some air. Real hot here in Phoenix today, so this glue might dry real quickly. Let's see if I can shove some of that glue in there. Doesn't seem to be going in there too good. Just one second here. Okay, let me uh, back this camera off. It's hard, kind of getting in the way as I'm working. I'll try to shove some glue in there. a little more pressure on this thing it might crack some more just kind of try to put it in there it's important we get as much glue as we can in there I'll just wipe some of this off of here the wet damp cloth here Let's uh, let's take the pressure off this thing and see what we can do here. All right, so I want to get this glue off of here before I try to clamp this back down again. 
and we'll reverse clamp it this next time make it go inwards rather than outwards I think I'm going to do something like this Let me get some clamps on this, just a second. Okay, so what I did was I put a clamp on the inside there, block like this, and um, I didn't use a block on the outside. Not really concerned about the finish. I think the finish is pretty much done, and um, not my favorite finish anyway, so. Okay, so I've got that pretty flat along here. I'll give it another turn. Get this as flat as I can across here. Then I'm going to put another clamp across this top here. You kind of need to get these kind of clamps there. Uh, the jaws are real wide. Let's see, these are about five inches wide. And about five inches long so to do anything like this you kind of need to in order to reach in there you're going to have these wider jaws and, um, let me put another block in there trying to get this thing as closed as possible this joint okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this thing dry for overnight or something and then uh, we'll come back at it and um, I think there's a few other spots on this shell that are pretty bad See, here's another one right here. If you can see that right there. It's caused from over tightening these lugs and they want to just start tilting out. So, before I do this one, let's see how this one goes. I'll just let it dry overnight and we'll get back with you. With you. Okay, we're back. And this is what it looks like now that it's glued down. Um, I'll put a straight edge on there so you can kind of see. You now there's still some space in between there, which I should be able to take care of when I'm sanding it flat. So that should be okay. That's that crack in there. You'll always see these cracks, but uh, we're just trying to make the thing more uh, solid that way when someone else re-tensions it it doesn't uh... okay ran out of battery there so I'll just uh, start over here I'm gonna put these blocks inside the shell and I'm gonna put that jack back in there and uh, jack it right up in the center of that crack see if we can spread it out a little bit
Okay. This crack goes all the way through to the badge hole and beyond. As you can see there, it goes all the way to here, back out this way and up. A lot of stress on this drum at one time. I'm trying to put a little more pressure on this jack because um, you have to be able to get that glue in there. Alright, let's try to get some glue in there. Try to smush it in there. Some on the inside here too. I can feel a ridge in there. Try to get it to uh, adhere in there. Some of this glue off of here. And that wasn't so great. Let me wipe all that off and reapply the glue. Kind of keep pushing it in that crack. This crack isn't so deep, so getting it in this crack is not as easy as the other one. That we can try. And I'll release the pressure on this jack. get this one over here Trying to get this thing to glue right down there in the center of this drum here, the shell, so we can put 
pressure in the middle there. Now what we'll do is we'll get let that dry and um, I've got that all glued down. As you can see, let that dry for overnight and see what we come up with. Okay, so now we've got those seams all or these uh, cracks all glued together. Now we just want to take down the hump in the middle and I'll do that by fastening my shell into my jig that I talked about in previous episodes of Vintage Drum Restoration Garage and if you want to look back and you'll see how I made that. It's a great little uh, way to hold your shell down while you're working on it. So I have several belt sanders but this one is quite a nice one. It's a 3 by 18 It's a um, small and you can get in and do your work without holding up a big old uh, heavy belt sander and uh, this this does a good job so if you find a small one any kind of work uh, black and decker anything ryobi whatever so um i put a uh, this is, looks like a about a hundred grit maybe 120 and it's worn out so it's even less so maybe it's you know 150 at this point don't want it too heavy but i wanted enough to where i can knock this uh, shell down a little bit so you'll notice what i'm going to do is i'm going to sand sideways like this that cuts better that's for cutting if you go this way you're going to create lines in the shell so just watch what i do trying to take down that hump in the middle. And there it is. About as far as I want to go with it. Now it's nice and flat across there. I got my straight edge on there. And yes, it is flat. That's what we want. This flat surface. I'll just continue to work right with my way around the shell and I'll uh, come back to you when I've got that done okay what I've done was uh, first of all I I wasn't happy with the way that was going with the way that was going with the uh, previous uh, belt sander so I changed it to my trusty old Makita this 3 by 21 classic uh, old belt sander that I've had for years and it works great and I went to a heavier grit about a um, this looks like about a up to 50 grit but it's worn down so you might as well call it 80. all right then I, I cut all that paint off there and of course it leaves scars in it it's not taking off as much wood as you would think but i'm trying not to go down too low and then now i'm i'm changing it over here to 120 just to get the scars off it and i'll show you how i go about that
see I'm not leaving the uh, machine on the whole time. I'm just jolting the, the on-off button on and off. So that way it's not constantly cutting. And I can see what I'm doing a little better. want to try to keep this thing from bouncing so you got to get this thing to where it'll balance on there just right if it's, if it's bouncing it's going to start digging into the shell just trying to get it to skate right over the shell just nicely smooth as it's going to be for a, uh, a belt sander cut. Another thing you want to keep in mind when you're belt sanding is you're, you're, you're actually sanding in this area here where it's flat. This, this area right here, that's all. You start digging in with this wheel or the rear wheel you're gonna have big problems, all right? So just concentrate that all your flatness has to come in this area. I've been doing this for many years, so I've been a little bit experienced. So if you're not real sure what you're doing, do it on something else, uh, just any kind of plywood or whatever, and get an idea of what you're dealing with before you um, go digging into your shell, because you can only do it once. All right, so we've uh, pretty much gotten this down to where we want it. No more belt sanding on this shell. It's looking pretty darn good. And uh, the next step is to, uh, we'll start going down on the, uh, we'll start using a, a palm sander on this and probably start out with about a 220, 220 grit. Get all these sanding marks out of there any of this. I don't know if you can see that. There's some sanding marks in there. You got to get those off before you start with a lighter grit. All right, so that's what we'll do next. Okay, friends, so I think that's going to be about it for this video. Uh, uh, we're going to continue on in the next one. I don't like to keep these videos too darn long because, you know, you get bored and I got other things to do. It's getting a little hot out here. So uh, if you want to subscribe, that'd be great. Got a lot of new subscribers lately. Surprised, actually. Anyway, thanks for subscribing, guys. 
you got any questions, let me know. I'll be glad to answer them if you uh, want to know what's coming up, or even if you have any ideas, that'd be great. Okay, friends, till then, take care.